Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Find Out What's in Polenta's Forest. Grab yourself a glass of water or a cup of tea and spend the next few minutes with me. And like I always tell you, do not believe everything you hear. Check the facts and do your own research. 33, 33, 33. That is the magic number. Guess what's happening? Don't you want to know what my butterflies are saying? My chair is crooked. Don't you want to know what my butterflies are talking? 33, this is episode 33. 33! <laughs> Can you believe that this is episode 33? I can't believe it. I can't believe it. This is just amazing to me. This is just amazing to me. Ah, that song just scared me. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's like, what? I'm so consumed with saying 33. And look it, I have my little counter here because I'm determined to say 33, 33 times during the show. I think I already screwed it up. I think I already pushed it one too many times. <laughs> so, but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is just fabulous. I never thought, oh, I'm trying to turn this music down and it keeps getting louder and louder and louder. But you know what? When I started doing this show, I don't know what I was thinking, but I did not think for a second that I would have made it to 33 episodes. This is absolutely crazy. So anyway, I am Palenta, and this is Me Forest. Thank you for joining me for episode number, what? 33. What? 33. What? 33. What? 33. That's right. I said it. This is episode number 33. This is crazy. Crazy, crazy. I have cool news. Cool news to talk to you about this evening. But you know what? Actually, you know how I like to show you cool pictures? And I'm going to start the show off with a super cool picture. Because I like this. And those of you that know me know that I'm a little bit of a daredevil chicken. But Roseville Center for Thrill Seekers can skydive minus the sky. And look at that. What do you know? It's on page 33. I'm kidding. It's not on page 33. But if it really was on page 33, I would consider that to be a lucky number considering this is episode 33. <laughs> but look at this. Can you see that? That is so cool. So this article, it says here, for many people, the potential thrill of falling to earth doesn't exceed the risk of jumping out of an airplane. A new business in Roseville solves that problem. The business, I Fly Sacramento, operates an indoor wind tunnel used to simulate skydiving. How cool is that? I double dog dare you. If you want to go and do this, I am not kidding. I am putting this out there. I am shouting out to you 33 times. If you want to go and do this, I give you my word. I will pinky swear with you. I will go and do it. Hit me up. This looks like so much fun. iFly centers have been attracting first-time flyers and experienced skydivers as they've popped up across the country. That is fun. And it looks like fun. You know, I remember years ago, um, my niece and I, we went to uh, Sunrise Mall. And they had one of those wind tunnels in there. And it was so incredibly funny. Because we went in there together. And at the time, I didn't have my, I didn't have my feathers yet. I think it was like maybe 2000 and, 
I don't know, like 10 or 11 or something. But I, I mean, I've only had feathers since 2012. So, but I still had my long hair and it was like braids and everything. And we went in there and it started swirling around. And it was just kind of like, whoosh. And then he just thought it was kind of cool. Oh my goodness. It was like a dang tornado in there. And it jacked us up. When we came out of there, we look like little bunny foo foo hopping through the forest, scooping up the field mouse and popping them on the head. Look, this is episode 33, so I'm gonna act a little more extra silly than I usually do. And you know what? It's like, what is the obsession with 33? I don't know. You know what I think it is? I think because three and three make 33 and 11 times three is 33 and also three is a magic number yes it is yes it is another cool picture and after i show you this picture i'm going to take a break from saying 33 and i'm going to act like a normal person and i'm going to get to some real news but check this out. <laughs> space shuttle tank treks to LA Museum. A massive space shuttle fuel tank squeezes through the Los Angeles streets and it crosses the intersection 405 overpass. It was headed to join the retired orbiter Endeavor on display at the California Science Center. The 33 ton Imagine if that thing dropped on your head, you wouldn't even know it. Matter of fact, if it dropped on your, oh, look it. Oh my God, did you, did you see that? I missed that. I just missed it. Did you catch that? Look at that. This is an omen. The 33 ton. Oh my goodness. 150 foot long tank began moving a few minutes after midnight from Coastal Marina Del Rey, where it arrived by barge Wednesday. The orange brown sausage shaped tank, the last of its kind, is traveling by truck at about five miles an hour. It can't move any faster than that. That damn thing is so freaking heavy. And crews trim some trees and unbolted roadside poles to aid the move. Look at that. Can you see that? That thing is freaking huge. Okay, so, of course, you know what I'm going to say. Um, this is your homework because I don't have my facts straight right now. But it's episode 33, so I can get away with that. But, um, you know, when we first sent... I don't know if it was the Endeavor or the Voyager, the Challenger, whichever. But when we sent that thing up into outer space, remember, we sent records and poems and all kinds of things up there. And you know what is still going on up there is the song Johnny Be Good. You know, I totally understand reaching out and wanting to communicate with other life in the whole nine yards. But this is the thing. Sometimes you need to mind your own business and stay in your own dang yard because you walk out into this big, beautiful... No, let me give you an example. Like with World of Warcraft, those of you that have played World of Warcraft, you know what happens lots of times. You're in the game and you look out and you see everything is beautiful. It's just absolutely beautiful. And you walk out there and there is nothing happening at all. And as soon as you get on the road, those great big black rock orcs, they just come in with their hammers and they take you out. So my point is, you're sending out signals and calling people and you don't know what you're calling. If you were calling Bugs Bunny or Daffy Duck and you knew that's what you were calling, that's one thing. But you don't know who you are reaching out to. You just calling, calling out around the world. You do not know who you are reaching out to. Oh my God. 
Ain't no aliens coming down here. I saw a bumper sticker the other day and it said, no aliens are coming down here because there are no intelligent life forms. <laughs> okay, let me see. Um, I'm going to go to one piece of drama and then I'm going to go back to something funny because I'm getting stuck on all this uh, car corruption. <laughs> but here we go. Suzuki chairman to quit as CEO amid mileage scandal. So, Osamu Suzuki is the chairman of the Suzuki Motor Corporation. He plans to give up day-to-day -day control of the automaker he has led for the last four decades in response to a scandal over improper fuel economy tests on cars that the company sells to Japan. Isn't Suzuki Japanese? Anyway, it says the move is the latest management reshuffle resulting from a wave of testing scandals in the auto industry. Suzuki Motors said that Osamu Suzuki, who is 86, would give up his position as chief executive but retain the title as chairman. Well, you know what? Seriously, the man is 86. Now, I'm not implying that he has no life left in him, but come on. He is 86 freaking years old. It's not like he's 18 or he's 26 or he's 30 or 40 and it's going to ruin the rest of his life. This man is established. He's got it made and he's got it going on. And it's a mileage scandal. You know what? Quite frankly, I think it's stupid. Because you have Takata that's still putting out airbags, blowing up in people's faces, and we're worried about an 86-year-old man with some mileage scandal. I think, quite frankly, I think it's uh, I think it's stupid. Because you have us little people down here that are trying really hard to get our cars smogged. Meanwhile, there's volcanoes erupting, and you got the, the, the small places that are tweaking your little things here and pushing it back so you can so you can pass your small. Man, people, times are hard for us, okay? We are struggling to make it. Good grief. All right, let's see. What else do I want to tell you about? Um, okay, here, I'm sorry. I, I have to go there. I got to talk smack about this. Listen to this story. It says G7 commits to cracking down on terrorist financing. <laughs> okay. So, should it actually say G7 admits to terrorist financing? Anyway... The group of seven major economies agreed to more aggressive action to fight the financing of terrorism and violent extremism that are a threat to global stability. Do you guys understand what I just said? I mean, really. Okay, I'm just going to finish reading it, and you guys can read between the lines, because, matter of fact, I'm going to start over, and I'm going to read the whole thing, and then you guys can read between the lines and, and come to your own opinion, okay? I'm just going to, I'm going to read the whole thing here. It says, the group of seven major economies agreed to more aggressive action to fight financing, terrorism, and violent extremism that are a threat to global stability. Finance leaders of the G7 issued an action plan following talks calling for an increased exchange of information on financial intelligence, reducing the level of cross-border transactions subject to disclosure and collaboration on sanctions for terrorists along with financial networks. The announcement followed two days of talks ahead of a G7 summit in central Japan's Isle region. Having agreed to only, 
oh my goodness, having agreed to only tacit coordination of their varying strategies for boosting growth, the G7 Financing Committee turned Saturday to issues such as terrorist financing, tax evasion, and support for fighting pandemics. Now, the Japanese finance minister, Taro Aso, acknowledged differences with the U.S. over such issues as exchange rates. You know, financing terrorists, okay, you know what? I read that article, you heard me, and I'm not going to say anything else about it. I'm just, I'm not going to say anything else about that one. But uh, one thing that I will say real quick is the state bills on police files, body cameras, fails to advance. Now, we just had a case where the BART said, hey, lady, quit messing in your purse. I'm going to beat the crap out of you. Now it's a $1.35 million suit. Here, it says that the state's bill on police files, body cameras, fails to advance. There's a big article about why we cannot finance our cops, not finance, but why we cannot put body cameras on our police. Why not? It is for our safety and their safety. But we can spend millions of dollars sending spaceships and junk in outer space that gets lost. It makes no sense to me. You know, but I can say that 33 times and nobody will even hear me. So moving on to something that I think is super cool that I would like to talk about 33 times, but I'm only going to say it once. In New Orleans, ghosts are regarded as family. In this little picture, you can see this haunted house and people are just sitting outside chilling. So it says here, it is generally accepted that in New Orleans, New Orleans is unlike any other American city. Where else will you find people willingly boarding buses marked cemeteries? <laughs> Where else will you find voodoo priests and priestesses being lauded as rock stars? Their graves are being decorated with floral tribunes, you know, with other cities, they, 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 they think that's being sinful and all this kind of nonsense. But in Los, I mean, not Los Angeles, I'm sorry, but in New Orleans, these people are considered saints, you know, and where will you find stately homes from the French Quarter to the Garden District to the River Road offering quite the same testament to a rich, colorful, and often haunted history. And if these houses could talk, theirs would be a conversation peppered with tales of lost pirates' treasure, doomed love, naughty affairs, political corruption, intrigue, grisly murders, the elegant facades, all kinds of stuff. Let me tell you something. New Orleans has a story to tell. New Orleans is awesome. Awesome, awesome. Like I said, in New Orleans, ghosts are family. This is how it is. They have respect for their ghost. Matter of fact, they probably respect their ghost more than most people here respect people. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gents, that is our show for this evening. Thank you so much for joining me as I celebrated episode 33. Have a fabulous rest of your week, evening, afternoon, whatever, because there's no telling what part of the day it is as you are watching me. I am so very grateful for everything, and I am grateful for you, too. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can buy my book everywhere around the world. Angel
angels passing through and you might not know it but there is an angel sitting beside you right now so you better behave and we are gonna get on out of here with my favorite tune one love stay tuned thank you for joining me for find out what's in Belinda's forest God bless you all and I will see you next time. Good night. <laughs>